Hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Okay, I made a little mini jig of the BS joint for doing BS joints. If you watched my last one, I have my main jig right here. This is just a quick and easy, but the difference between this one and that one is this one's going to answer your questions. Everybody kept asking, and that is, why am I drilling at a 12 degrees? That is the mystery. So if you want to know why, stay tuned because I'm going to show you and I'm going to prove to you why you got to drill those holes at 12 degrees instead of at 90. So if you're ready. So, and the bad news is I have my voice back. So <clears throat> there's going to be a little rambling going on here while we're doing this. So pay attention and I'm going to show you something that you probably never even knew. So anyway, welcome to the shop. My name is Russ. Let's go over what is going on here. When I made this one yesterday, and you have to watch that, I would dig for yesterday. Watch that video and make you understand when I built this. And there's still a video I want to do on this of all the tips and trips, tricks and the accessories. But I decided I'd put this video in between here real quick because it was an important question. And that is, why not just drill at 90 degrees? Why am I going at 12 degrees? Most people do not understand and they're not convinced. So let me show you what goes on with, especially with plywood. First, let's talk about the structure of wood. Plywood versus solid wood. On solid wood, you have end grain, and everybody that does woodworking understands how wet end grain, and if I drill into that straight and put a doll in there, it's not going to hold near as strong as when I put it in this way. So part of my contention was, on plywood, you have side grain on two sides and then you have face grain on two sides of your piece so your edges are plywood and all kinds of plywood not just hardboard not just osb every plywood out there that i'm aware of it is put together in laminates in thin layers so that means that all these thin layers are glued together to make this thickness the problem that you run across is this plywood is at its weakest to pry those plies apart. It does, happens very easily. That is why you get a lot of failure when you drive a screw into a blind hole, into a non-existing hole, and you just drill it into the, the side grain of plywood. It'll it'll just split wide open, and that screw will actually split it apart instead of digging into the different plies and pulling itself in properly. And that's just inherent to plywood. So you have to take that into consideration whenever you're going to be either use a screw or a, 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 a dowel or a BS pin. You still have to take and consider all those things. Let me show you what happened. I made this for a reason. This is strictly exactly 90 degrees straight down. Two things happen when you try to go in here and if you take a look at this see if I can do this you can see that it goes in the center and look at there it's it's actually dead center all the way through as it sits there like that right there's only one problem the the hole in the screw in the real world you get this and the deeper you go the further that wobble can be and so the more likely that is going to happen. So if you start, I used this, and I drilled this hole right there. Dead center. It doesn't look like it on the camera, but believe me, that is dead center. And what happened? I got down so far, and it blew out this side. And I had the clamp on there to help reinforce. Like this, to help reinforce it from blowing out. But the wobble alone caused that thing to wander over until it came to the edge too close, and it just started coming out the edge. Trying to get this bit to go straight down and stay straight down all that distance and not get pushed out by the plies, which is what's happening. It's just the further the deeper that goes, the more likely that's going to come out one side or the other because you don't have much distance here. This is on quarter inch. Imagine trying to do this on 3 16 inch plywood. With it put in that 12 degrees, I'm very confident that I can do this on 3 16 inch plywood as readily as I can do this on quarter inch and make it good. If you remember my other video, 
I put three bit, and you, I did it right here on the video, showed you. I put three on there, three perfect drills. No problem at all. I did these three drills before I filmed it, before I put it the video, just to make sure everything was set up and, and do a practice run. And those all came out perfect. And even though I did them at separate times, they came out exactly together the same. That's the idea behind having a little jig to control your pins so that you can get some metric look for aesthetic reasons uh, when you're doing these pins. The problem is, is that you still have to go at that angle. The other thing that can happen is I drilled a second hole and there's the first one that blew out the opposite corner. I drilled a second hole and if you take a look what do you see there? That was the drill bit that did that. Even though I drilled it very slow, I pulled it out several times and drilled it, it still pushed those plies apart just from the pressure of the drill bit drilling the hole. Imagine what happens that if you take your pin and you put it in there like so. Let me see how deep did I go. I didn't even go that deep and it was already splitting out. But just imagine now that pin's in there and you put stress on that on that pin by this way you're taking this pin and now you're moving it left to right and what happens to that gap instead of the pin breaking off here it's actually going to spread those plies apart the pressure is on the whole uh, dowel so when you get any kind of pressure on this thing like this when it's in use after the pin is in place it will tend to want to actually push those plies apart which weakens the joint weakens the pin in its place and it'll pop loose sooner or later and it'll fail uh, dowel pins will fail on plywood or even on end grain uh, pretty readily because of that leverage factor that is why you can't go in straight because you're lining up perfectly in alignment with the plies which gives you a lever to actually pry them apart. When you go in at an angle, now just imagine you got all these little tiny plies, like sheets of paper, all glued together. And instead of going in between so that you pull them apart somewhere, you go in and let's go straight across. Now, when you put that pin in, it's not trying to pull those pieces apart. If that pin starts to move, it's actually keeping everything tight together. So. Obviously, the closer you get straight up and down, the more that leverage is there. But when you get to about 12 degrees, you're actually going through almost every single ply in that at one point or another, but at different points. So your upward and downward pressure is not making those plies actually want to pull apart. It's just making them wanting to crush instead. That's why you have to go in at an angle so that it won't pry those apart and you actually will get a better cleaner hole that isn't going to be a bad hole and have blowout or some silly thing happen by going in at that angle and controlling it like I did then you can then you can by trying to go straight in and hope that it doesn't blow out the side or split it that's why I say go in at 12 degrees you can very easily prove this yourself just make one of these it's quick and easy I drilled a hole took that piece and I moved it to where and clamped it to where it was exactly one eighth of an inch from the wall here to the center of that hole that put me right in the center of quarter inch plywood so for quarter inch plywood this thing lines up perfectly in the center so you can do that and use this and if that's all you want to do for bit pinning go ahead and just make this and it's simple easy take me 15 minutes to make this thing not counting glue up drive time uh, this was real simple to make and flawless it works like it's supposed to but it doesn't work very well because you don't get the clean holes guaranteed not to give you any blowout like it will uh, using the jig so that is why you want to take those holes and actually tip them um, the other thing I want to talk about is that I am going to take, and I've just I've been thinking about it since you guys talked about this too. Again, I just stepped outside the box again, and I decided to take my jig, and I'm going to put 45 degree ones in here, right here, that are going to come out right here, so I can put the fence over here. But I think I may even take 
and move some of these and put one more row across here at the 90 degree so that I'll be able to use this jig at the 12 degrees or at the uh, 90 degree by moving the fence in here and I'll put a slot in here for this fence to be put here so that I would work in this area and then if I do 45s my fence goes on here and I would use this end of it so I'll actually be able to do 45 degree angles so if I have miter joints that's the one I would use if I'm going to use butt joints then I would probably use the 12 degree but there may be examples where you might want to have that at straight up and down so yeah, I'm probably going to put at least one straight up and down one in here and figure out some way to be able to attach my fence at that point and just to see it, so that it's there if I need it. Um, and I think that will actually make this thing work a little bit better. I did put a scale on here so that when I go to put, if I want to measure and put a stop on one of my drill bits at a certain distance, I can quickly take it and just use this as my reference. And within a quarter inch or so, I can get it set to set my stop on all my drill bits. So I put a little scale on here just to make it handy and be close to where it needs to be. Uh, the other thing is about using this jig with the removable fence is the besides doing corner joints at a 45 degree, I mean at a 12 degree angle here, what if you want to put a bag together a box like this? You can pin this one too with this thing. Check this out. So, because it's a removable fence, I can just take my fence off. This is my my drill point is right there. So if I line this up just like here, like I would out here on near the edge, I can then drill a hole and set a pin in here. As long as I stationize this piece here, then I can drill holes and pin it here I could even put one pin this way turn it around and put a second pin in this way so that they're toenailed in so that this thing would then sit in there and never really move so I could put a couple of pins at a flat spot right and then only on the corners if I want to anchor this with little uh, BS pins so the B, the BS pin system actually and I had to call it a full system I pre-cut my doll down to the one inch so that they're generically ready to go for almost any use. Um, I also have two different size dowels I use right now. I have a 7 16th inch dowel that I do have one set of these, which are nice because then I can just use my drill bit, drill one hole, and use these. But these are quite a bit smaller at, st at 7 64th. Uh, the 964 is kind of more comfortable with them so most of the time I probably would just redrill a hole bigger like I showed you and use the larger pin and it works better uh, but if you want go looking until you can find these at this dimension then you only don't have to redrill the hole even you can just use these and it'll work pretty much as, just as well now again these aren't as thick as those remember so that makes the strength value is probably going to be a little less but on quarter inch uh, bud joints. This is probably more than enough to keep any uh, bud joint from failing by putting two or three of these in on any given corner. So it's going to add the strength you want and by using the jig the way I've, de I've been designing it you'll be able to actually make a good easy consistent pin joint and be able to pin that joint without getting any damage or blowout on your piece because believe me if you're doing a really nice piece of hardwood that's a quarter inch thick. Last thing you want to see is a hole get blasted out the side of that nice side of that box. And this will help prevent that kind of nightmare, but yet still help you set a good strong joint on your pieces that you really want to have no flaws with. So it, it's very versatile. I'll go over all the accessories now in the next video to show you how to put everything together and how it kind of works in more detail. And then on the third, on the one after that, I'll show you how to actually make this and what to watch out for, what to think about when you make yours, so that when you make yours, you probably can make yours even better than I did when I made mine. But right now, this thing is off on the right direction. I'm very happy with it so far. I, when I do the making it, I will take the time to show you how I drill the 45 degree holes so you can figure out how to drill your 12 degree and your 45 degree holes 
for your jig if you said you want to build it. So stay tuned. There's a couple more episodes coming. I hope I didn't ramble too much here. No, actually, it doesn't matter. I appreciate you staying to the end. If you have any questions, any thoughts, any comments, if you don't understand how something works, like why why I didn't do 90 degree, why I went at an angle, I'll be more than happy to explain to you in detail if that's what it takes. I Hopefully, I explained that pretty well here. So, uh, I do believe the angle is important. So, anyway, now I am rambling. Listen, thanks for coming by. Comments, questions, or any observations, leave them down below. If you make one of these, send me a picture. I would love to see your version of it. I am very interested, and I'm sure others will be too. So, uh, in fact, when I get these pictures, if you want to be on the list to get the same pictures from me after I get them from somebody else, uh, I will set it up so that anybody that sends me pictures... I can forward them on to a group of everybody else so you can see those pictures firsthand. Uh, I can easily do that and just forward any email I get with those pictures. So we can share these pictures with each other as we go along too, if you'd like. So anyway, I think maybe that wouldn't be a bad way to do it. I would keep the emails as private as we can. So I'm not going to spread it, but if you want to do something like that, let me know. And maybe we can use my email so that when you send me pictures, I can still share them with everybody else. So, anyway, that's it. Comments, you know what to do with them. If you learned something here, or you like this video, hit that like button. Let's me know I'm still doing something right. Uh, most importantly, though, please come back again because I'm nowhere near done. And you should always bring a cup of coffee because you never know when I'm going to go off and start rambling. We'll see you guys again soon. Bye.